This holiday season, Raycon is making gifting simple and affordable, so we can prioritize some very important cine. Raycon's everyday audio earbuds have been a game changer for us to stay tuned into the movies we love while tuning out background chaos. Making an aim in premium audio over the last year, Raycon is serving up gifts that don't just collect dust on the shelf. It provides everyday use without compromising quality. We sin well at night knowing you don't have to break the bank to celebrate yourself or loved ones this holiday season. Right now, Raycon is offering limited time bundles on some of their best-selling products, including fitness kits, an everyday audio kit, and several others. We recommend the everyday audio kit to cover all your bases for all your audio and entertainment needs. This holiday season, get premium audio and power tech at a great price and save even more doing it. Go to buyraycon.com slash sins to get 15% off site-wide. This movie exists. Disney's massive castle is perched at the edge of a waterfall? The next animation better be the castle slowly crumbling due to erosion. Movie waves hello in slow motion for all the some time. Hans Christian Ander reading. Also, are we really quoting the Anderson version? Does this mean the live version will have Ariel suffer horrible pain when she transforms? Watch her crush fall for another woman? Nearly kill Eric and then die in the end? Is Disney really gonna go there? No, they are not. Tonight's the coral moon. They say this is when the Sea King calls his mermaid daughters together to lure men to their death. And by they, I mean the scriptwriters who needed me to be their exposition for the day. But I do not want to tell the Queen that her son fell overboard on my watch and on his birthday of all days. Thinking it worse for someone to be lost at sea on their birthday. I'm pretty sure floating alone in the vast expanse of the ocean until you lose consciousness and drown sucks even when it's not the same day your mother grunted your wrinkly corpus into existence. Everything above water says dark, cloudy day in the middle of the ocean, but thankfully for the CG artists who want to show off, everything under the sea says bright, colorful shoreline reef. Speaking of light, whatever bullshit super bright light source is somehow backlighting a hidden castle at the bottom of the ocean. Look, I get it. You didn't want to go with the classic mermaid shell bra, but why would these creatures have conveniently developed PG-friendly scales over their breasts? They are human from the hips up, and breasts and nipples serve a very important biological purpose. Who will think of the starving mermaids? Beautiful. Stunning, really. But I can't stop thinking about these slave fish whose sole job is to apparently constantly adjust to pretending to be a cape? Also, how incredibly useless is a cape of fish? So useless it doesn't appear for the rest of the movie and is obviously just for show to his daughters that are already tired of his shit. I reminded her about the gathering just this morning. What more can one crustacean do? To make sure Ariel's here? Let's see, stay with her so you can remind her when it's time? Sing her a song about it so it's easy to remember? Bribe her with an extra 20 thingamabobs if she's there on time? You had options, Seb. You can go find her. Sending a crab to retrieve someone when you can summon the entire sea. <laughs> Flounder, stop being such a guppy. Ariel is a peer pressuring mer bully, and no amount of sea charm on her part will atone for how she pushes Flounder into danger like this. Ariel, wait for me! And then, like a true asshole, she doesn't. Getting cold fins? No way! Good. What is this conversation even about? Fish are already cold, so Ariel is essentially asking if Flounder is feeling normal, which then means Flounder isn't feeling normal, and Ariel is happy about that? Did we send this in the animated one? Yes, we did. And we'll keep doing it because it's still a sin that hasn't been fixed. I wonder why a human would need one that size. Wild. That's the same thing my college girlfriend said the first time we forked. Nothing is going to happen. Character confidently says that nothing bad will happen immediately before something very bad somehow manages to happen cliche. I wonder if mermaids taste extra amazing, and that is why this shark is motivated enough to risk its own safety and destroy this ship with its delicate body to get to her. You'd think instinct to survive would kick in, but nope. <laughs> Predator has easy prey, but is distracted because someone lightly bumped its head with a barrel. Come back, Flounder, it's just Scuttle. Yeah, don't worry about her. She's just hunting and eating your brothers. This is very, very unusual. A bird hanging out underwater talking to a mermaid and a fish about cutlery as if it has all the oxygen in the world? Yeah, that is unusual. He thinks all humans are barbarians. Oh, they're not so bad. They are. <laughs> Loudly slurping your fingernail shrimp. It wasn't Ariel's fault. Bull shark it wasn't, and Flounder knows this. Not only did she pressure him into going, but by the time the shark showed up, she had already long missed her appointment with the Coral Moon Committee. The only world where Flounder tries to defend her like this is the world of the script, where the writers need Triton to find out they rebelliously entered the elephant graveyard. Shark, 
So you went to the shipwrecks again. Because sharks only exist in one very specific part of the ocean. Why do you have to be so strong-minded? Just like your mother. The patriarchy. But as long as you live in my ocean, you'll obey my rules. Claiming ownership of the entire ocean. We really need to have a conversation about the Mernarchy. Educated crustacean. Educated? Where? Do you have a degree that we don't know about? I didn't even think crabs swam in schools. Ariel's hair does not interlock with this sea foliage and immediately tangle her in an awkward fight sequence just to get into her grotto. I don't see how a world that makes such wonderful things could be so bad. Hollywood. Ariel sings that she has 20 thingamabobs and then sings, who cares, big deal, I want more. And I'm beginning to think we have severely underestimated Ariel's hardcore capitalistic tendencies. I wish I could play some of the amazing vocalizations that Halle Bailey is doing here, but since I can't, I'll just take this set off as tribute to her incredible performance. Movie doesn't show us the scene of Ariel leaping 15 feet out of the ocean, clinging with upper body strength to the boat and hoisting herself in while going entirely undetected. I would have enjoyed seeing that impressive Ariel display. Touching a strange furry creature you've never seen before. Storm coming in fast. Ah, that's because plot convenient storms are never late. Plot convenient storms arrive precisely when they mean to. What well, crap's galleon had oil lamps hanging from the sails, and what scurvy coxswain mopped the deck with an accelerant? Max. I'm not gonna send Eric for risking his own life to save a dog. Oh no, quite the opposite. I'm going to send him for not thinking about Max until he heard him barking while he was already abandoning ship. This should be the end. He has no breath and would get the bends. This lackluster approach to life-saving compression measures works. Ah, get off me, you fool! And even though he's directly downstream of her in the food chain, she will listen to him and not see him as lunch. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Turning yes into a word with 40 syllables. Ariel Singh asks the question, what would I pay to stay here beside you? And I'm continuing to think we have severely underestimated Ariel's hardcore capitalistic tendencies. Also, I still don't get it. Why does Ariel instantly fall for a guy she doesn't even know? For all she knows, he's a drunk dancing idiot obsessed with a furry beast incapable of handling a crew and dumb enough to take the wheel and run a ship into the rocks. The movie has the chance to right the wrong of the animated film and show us Ariel's seal flop along the sand back into the water, but it doesn't. Is this how they plan to take Eric home? Dragging him along the beach as if you were a prisoner? Make the man one of those fancy cot things before you ruin his pedicure. As Ariel creeps along this rock gushing about a rando guy, I'm beginning to understand this movie on a deeper level. Ariel's a stalker. Rumor has it that mermaids are sirens with amazing voices that call out to men on the shores and ships. Yet here Ariel is singing at the top of her fish lungs and no one hears her, even though they're just a little ways up the shoreline. Sebastian, how did you find me? Great question. We can get to that sinful bit after we address the better question, which is, how the f*** did Ariel lift this goddamn statue into her grotto? The ship rode on the wind and they filled the sky with fire. Okay. So like a dragon then? Ariel's missing the fear gene, isn't she? Movie takes the orchestral perfection and harmonies that made Under the Sea feel like a huge fun production and downgrades it to a hollow sounding duet with some pretty visuals and not even a fraction of the fun. Encouraging kids to ride on jellyfish tentacles. Jeez, Disney, you already own Avatar. You don't have to try and reinvent it. The editor's seizure inducing cutting techniques. Somebody got to nail that girl's fins to the floor. Leaving Sebastian's predilections for torturous violence in the movie. She was real, she saved my life. You sure sound certain of yourself for a guy who was completely comatose with his eyes you closed the entire time Ariel was even around. How many shipwrecks have there been in our waters this year? I'm taking it the Queen doesn't know that this particular shipwreck included a pretty massive avoidable fire. That doesn't seem to be anything she's focused on. This movie balances out Ariel's I'm not happy with how things are going song with Eric's own not happy and I will justify it with my own song song. Uh, I think I'm supposed to consider this to be a way to relate to Eric now, but both of them are privileged folks from castles. What could I possibly have in common with them? Eric is now singing about Ariel being silhouetted by the rising dawn and I promise this will be the last time I mention it but your eyes were closed the entire time, you horny liar. Didn't your mom just tell you no more ships? I mean, obsessed prince is gonna prince obsessively and all, but at least give us five minutes of obedience, you delinquent. This song has been almost four full minutes of wild, uncharted suck. What's going on with her? Well, she's just at that age when she doesn't want to hang out with her older sisters anymore. Exactly. You remember what I was like. This movie did not need to be two hours and 15 minutes long. What the f*** did that fish do to deserve that? Why is it even in the movie? Don't give me that bullshit about creating tension and tone for the next scene like the Little Mermaid live action remake is some sort of art house cinema. It's a f***ing fish story. Get on with it. The impractical ergonomic design of this throne where the king's left arm is forever higher than his right. He's my little one in love. Oh, I tried to stop us, uh Sebastian falls right into the misunderstanding, propels the plot forward cliche, but I'm not surprised if I had a nickel for every time crabs ruined a good love story. They killed your mother. Technically, the ship ran into the rock and she was crushed between them, but semantics. He's compassionate and kind. He's and a human. 
You're a mermaid. Yes, but that doesn't make us enemies. Fun fact, back in the day, Shakespeare was like, you know what, I hope my work is done a million times in a million different ways in the future, including paving the way for mermaid-human relations. I'm totally cool with that, as long as they call it Romeo and Juliet. That's my only request. And f***ing Disney couldn't even give him that. Never leave again. Movie will try to redeem this asshole later. I'm your Auntie Ursula. So wait, does that mean you're Triton's sister? So where did the Octo features come from? I continue to believe that an Ursula movie would be better than any other stuff. What has your father told you about me? That you like to stir up trouble between humans and mer people. Okay, Ariel, let's talk about not giving away the truth quite so easily, hmm? Start with the rumors that her jello molds come with a side of horseradish sauce and stair step into the dark truth. Well, now I just want a movie about this giant creature and why it died with its mouth wide open like this. You don't seem at all like father described you. She says while floating over hundreds of skulls of her dead kin. Ursula squeezing this fish until it, um, excretes, and then using that as a face lotion might be the most darkly perverse and gross thing I have ever seen in the history of Disney films. McCarthy is fine in this, but the problem with these poor, unfortunate cover songs is that they sound like, well, cover songs. And not just any kiss. A kiss of true love. Disney's still asking those little kiddos to think the path to confirm love is through a kiss. Listen carefully, kids. Who should absolutely not be watching my videos? You won't find love in the lips or the hips or the thrusts or the nippy busts. You find love in longevity, depth of conversations, and the freedom to do as you need for yourself. Your partner should never make you feel like shit for being who you are, but rather support you as you evolve over time. The person you are today isn't who you will be, and a kiss will only confuse you because it activates your brain to release chemicals that are fantastic to feel, but ultimately confusing. Do not kiss someone and call it love. Do not commit to someone just because you kissed them and are curious about them. Disney, go f yourself for continuing to tell this story and not being brave enough to just call Ariel and Eric what they are. Horny. Having a cupboard full of magical spell potions all jumbled together and unlabeled. You're just asking to pull an emperor's new groove at this point. Come on, gal. It's either sink or swim. Well, it's likely sink, right? There's no reason Ariel should be able to understand how to tread water here now that her tail has turned into dangly flesh sacks. I would have given all the sins back if her toenails were thick and overgrown. So Sebastian told Triton that Ariel saved a human. Flounder says this instead of, I don't want cat. Bring, please. Darkness is taking me. And we're now into another new song that I can't sing along to. And this time it has the added benefit of being mostly sung through mental telepathy. Since Ariel has lost her voice, so we don't even get the benefit of seeing the emotion as it's being sung for most of the song. Prepaying for your swears. I understand that Ariel doesn't have a voice, but that isn't the only way to communicate, right? She's been waiting for this moment. She's just gonna stand there, do some pantomime or interpretive dance, or even just take him to the place on the beach where you saved him, anything. Just be miserable for the rest of your life. Welcome to the real world where you don't get to do what you want all the time and life is misery, unless you're a princess of the ocean and every tide turns in your favor. So how this movie is anything a little kid looks at as being inspiration is ridiculous. Don't forget about the kiss. I, no, no, not me, the prince. You gotta kiss the prince. Don't you remember? No, she doesn't. But now that you've told her, she will know, right? No? Does the spell somehow scramble any information related to prince kissing? If Ursula was going to cheat this hard, why didn't she just turn her into a poor unfortunate soul immediately without going through all the trouble? The movie is giving me the 1800s time period, but the zippered pillow is screaming 1920s. Has Ariel killed the prince yet? Reminding us that Anderson wrote a better story and Disney is unwilling to even attempt to tell it. Get it? He has a room where he keeps his thingamabobs too. Do you get it? Also, they added an extra 45 minutes to this movie to make room for this crap. I could have watched a full episode of Suits in that amount of time. Also, also, Suits. My little mermaid. Oh, for f**k's sake, roll the f**king credits. How did you know that was in there? And more importantly, how did you know he'd prefer what was in there to what it was before you broke it? Consent is important, Ariel. <laughs> Trying to blow your own conk. Did you know that crabs can't breathe oxygen from the air? The only way they can keep breathing on land is through water that stays on them. So after they dry out at around 24 hours or so, it's game over. The way I see it, Sebastian's on a ticking clock and no one seems concerned. I've spun off enough playground spinners to know there is no possible angle of release that puts Seb on the carriage seat this perfectly. Movie doesn't know how to centrifugal force correctly. Ariel is clearly a danger to everyone around her and the movie thinks it's adorable. It is not adorable. It is terrifying. I think you'll be needing this. Jody Benson is not singing a duet with Halle Bailey in this scene.
Did he just buy that man's personal hat without even asking? He's clearly wearing it through the rest of the movie, and I'm just not sure that's how that's supposed to work. Somehow, these islanders have evolved their dance to include sand throwing, which is obviously a threat since sand is basically a weapon. Hey! Hey! <laughs> hey, come back with that! Hypocrisy. Percussion. The amount of random convenience for these bamboo branches to naturally bounce off of each other in the exact rhythm for this song is like me sneezing into a pile of salt and it creating a perfect replica of the Venus de Milo. We're now into Kiss the Girl and the movie changes the lyrics from possible she wants you too, there's only one way to ask her, it don't take a word, not a single word, go on and kiss the girl, to possible she wants you too, use your words boy, and ask her, which is exactly what we asked them to do when we send the original, which of course means we're sending them for stealing our idea. Aries. 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 Oh, f off with this whole name guessing crock of bullshit. First, can we talk about how the girl from under the sea who didn't understand that you don't eat soap or flowers knows the constellation Aries? Also, there was no way you'd get from Aries to Ariel that quickly with just a little lip lip. She'd have been better off pointing at the air and then an eel and calling it a day. No. Everyone's asleep. So are we supposed to believe these two went in for a kiss in the boat and then when it was interrupted, didn't pick back up on it once they were on land? These two would have been making out as soon as their feet hit the beach and this movie should already be over. Damn it. Wearing the wrong color vest for your Luffy cosplay. Diablos X Voxina. Aquafina is now rapping a song that is 34% Morning Report from Lion King, 47% Lin-Manuel on a phone call, and 100% another unnecessary new song in a movie that is two hours and 15 minutes long. Oh my goodness, they just faded the glowing necklace into the glowing sun, and I take it back, this movie is pure cinematic genius. Convenient Scuttle, meet Convenient Mirror. You may know them already because they are friends with Convenient Spell that somehow doesn't work for reflections. What are we gonna do? Well, Flounder, you're going to continue being completely irrelevant to the movie for a bit longer because most of it is on land for now, but don't you worry. The movie will keep forcing the characters in where it can. Yes, y'all go! Yeah, girls, swim all the way around the coastline, all the way to the castle, then run up the hill. It will take a very long time, and you'll absolutely miss your deadline. Flounder, go tell the Sea King what's happened. He has to know everything. Waiting this long to get the most powerful person in the sea involved. Whatever witchcraft is keeping these candles lit just beside the whipping wind of the seaside party. Help me! Oh, I'm being attacked! Scene does not contain a tepihedron. Unlucky for Ariel, the sun is setting perfectly here on this shore. If only she'd been out to sea, there may have been more time. Also, why is Ariel turning back before sunset is finished? It's close, but let's go all CSIN on this movie's ass. Frame by frame that shit. And you can clearly see that Ariel starts to collapse when there is still a sliver of sun showing right here. You see that? Her head drops down and to the left. Frame 313, down and to the left. Down and to the left. Down and to the left. Eric is not thinking, holy shit, I almost f***ed a fish at this scene, but rather, how am I going to? And that is a sin. It's unbreakable. Even for you. But didn't you already break it with the whole mind wipe thing? Errol never agreed to that, so I'm pretty sure any court of law is going to void that puppy immediately anyway. I want to see you suffer. Little sisters, I want to believe Disney is brave enough to veer from its format and kill a character permanently, but this moment has olification written all over it. I have this powerful trident thing now that shoots destructive bolts of energy, but my best choice here is to send my eels after him so I can accidentally kill them instead when I finally use it. Give me your hand! They take all this time to hold hands only to immediately stop holding hands for the leap. I bet this giant Ursula monster would look pretty cool if you could actually see any of it ever. <laughs> Thinking that stirring up water would make obliterated ships not only float, but functional. I can't believe you make an entirely new movie, but keep this anticlimactic and bullshit ending. Okay, fine. It's Ariel this time that kills an all-powerful god with a glorified toothpick after she decided to go all Codzilla for no apparent reason, but I'm not sure the person steering the ship was really the issue here. Let me get this straight. The trident has the power to resurrect someone that it falls in the vicinity of and quickly undo any meaningful sacrifices almost accidentally? Wow, what a specific power. Also, at what point after this will Ariel begin to wonder why her dad hasn't brought back her mom? You gave your life for me. I mean, he lit it out for about the time it takes to microwave a burrito, but sure, whatever. And you fought to get my life back. No, no, she didn't. She fought to save her own life and the life of Eric. Nobody believed you were coming back. Well, I knew. And then, what, Eric? I hope the next thing is to find that pretty ring your mother gave you because nobody seemed to be worried about its loss anymore. You gotta be kidding me. My reaction to the fact that this movie is still going somehow makes it into the script. Then there's just one problem left. And what's that, your majesty? 
how much I'm going to miss my little one. You can literally give yourself legs anytime you want if you'd like to come visit, you stubborn f Also, I get that he thinks this is what she wants, but it still wouldn't be a bad idea to have a conversation with someone before surprising them with new body parts. What? We're transitioning away from Ariel's actual transformation? What the actual f I mean, sure, we don't want to see her rise out of the ocean in a goddamn wedding dress, so thanks for writing that wrong, but showing us nothing is still a sin. I want to see ripping fins. Your marriage marks a new beginning for us. Yes, a beginning. The immediate anger I am feeling as we assume Ariel is alluding to a sequel. I was right about the dinglehopper, wasn't I? Yes, you were, Scuttle. Lying to someone about a fork. It's hard to take anything King Triton says seriously when he has snot on his mustache. Okay, he doesn't, but anyone with facial hair in the water knows this is a thing, and it's clearly missing from this moment. Eric does not immediately ask King Triton to save everyone time on their voyage and steer his larger vessel with his magical motorboat skills. There's a hook in my face! I reminded her about the gathering just this morning. What more can one crustacean do? What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? If you come any closer, I will rip you to shreds. I am the Gmork. So you went to the Shibriks again. Those waters are dangerous. You don't have to worry about me. You think you could do these things, but you can't, Nemo! Just look at you, barely held together by your pills and your drink. Don't forget my pathetic love of country. Storm coming in fast. Iceberg, right ahead! Tommy, how's the peeping? Tommy, how's the peeping? Tommy, 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 Tommy. Enough. That's enough. And Eric had nothing to do with it. Eric? Eric? Why did you say that name? Who are you? The worst nightmare. What's your name? It's hard to say in English. Well, just say in your language. Behold the mermaid! Hi, Barbie. 